Yo, what's good people? It's your boy Matt. We back and today's episode is a slightly different episode because I got five fingers up and I'm giving you guys a top five. And it's an interesting top five because there are five genetics that I've ran in my whole entire existence since I've been growing and five of them have really stood out. And I wanted to put together a list of my top five genetics that I've ran since ever. I'm talking all the time. I got my list and I got my diesel dog tea because we're always about that diesel dog. So if you guys want to grab some of that diesel dog just like I got on, hit that link in the description, man. Right. Like I said, today's episode is all about my top five genetics. Because I'm always running that diesel. That's all I want. Let's start off real smooth because we ain't playing no games. And number one is that Mac and Jack. And this is no particular order, guys. This is literally no particular order. It's not ranked first, second, third, fourth, fifth. It's no particular order. It's just a top five. Any order, it doesn't matter, but it's five bangers. So number one or number five, depending on how you guys want to look at it, is that Mac and Jack. Now that Mac and Jack by Ethos Genetics is actually a cross of Mac and Jack Harrow. So that means it's banging, bro. Now personally, I've grown this back in the Caribbean when I was living out in Trinidad and it was a really nice plant to grow. I grew it in a 4x4, I had other plants in there. We actually did a full seed to harvest on this Mac and Jack. So if you guys want to check it out, have a look. It had a slightly longer flower time, but it was a beautiful strain. I'm talking unique terpene profiles and you guys know I love unique, unique smells, taste and all that stuff. This was a really unique one. It was almost like candy mixed with Skittles, mixed with, like, not the Skittles strain that starts with the Z. I'm talking, like, real candy Skittles. But it's like a unique type of Skittles. It's super strange, man, but I really loved it. And it got some really nice, funky purple colors, which also added to, like, the whole aroma, I'm thinking, of the purple candy smell. I don't know. It was just a really nice strain. Now, for this one, it can take a lot of training. I did a lot of training with this girl. I did all sorts of training. I used some of those binder clips and LST wires. I tied her down. I think I used LST clips as well. I did all sorts of stuff. And I think I ran this one in a seven gallon pot. That's what I flowered it in. I started off a pot it and ran all the way to seven gallons. So Mac and Jack, definitely one you guys should try if you haven't tried it already. I don't know if some of these strains are actually no longer in production. I haven't got a clue, but these are my top five. So let's move on. Number two, let's go. Now number two guys, we got that OMFG by Qualitrips, man. This is one of the strains that I ran that I did a lot of bro science techniques on. I did some stalk splitting on this. I did the ice bath on it. I did all sorts of stuff on this. So I literally had some of that fire from Qualtrips OMFG. The strain is called OMFG. It was dumb. It was bred by Qualtrips, and this one literally had fat nugs, like fat diesel type nugs, like gassy. It was almost like OG Girl Scout cookies type shit. If you guys know the original Girl Scout cookies, this is what it was like. It was literally like one of those ones. So that OMFG it really had me saying OMFG. And this one we also had a seed to harvest episode done on the channel. If you guys want to check it out, check it out. But I'm trying to like also on this list have a lot of ones you guys can have some visual stuff out. You guys can look and see what's going on with it. See how it turned out. And that's why I'm picking some certain ones that I did seed to harvest episodes on or I had featured heavily on the channel. If it's something that I grew and no one else ever saw it, I never even posted a picture of it, then I'm probably not going to have it on the list. But that OMFG, definitely worth a look, guys. Some fat nugs, fat flowers, and I would say that Bro Science Talking Loud podcast episode we did with Chad Westbrook because we broke down a ton of stuff, and some of the techniques that I mentioned in that video I actually done on this OMFG strain. So, yeah, OMFG is a really nice one. Diesel, diesel, that's all I can say. Diesel, it's gassy. It ain't got no fruity taste. It's gassy, gassy AF. Now when it came to the flowering time, I think it had like average flowering time about 8 to 10 weeks. Nothing really too crazy, nothing too short, but it was a really nice girl to grow in veg. I think I had like 8 of them, they were all regs. I had like 5 girls and 3 or 4 boys, I just threw them out. The boys, I just got rid of those boys, but the girls, amazing. Chef's kiss. So... OMFG by Qualtrips, number two. Now let's move on to number three. So number three, we actually got that in-house strain. You guys know I love in-house. And one of the first strains that I ran from in-house because I was just mesmerized by some of the pictures I saw online was that sugar cane, man. If you guys know about the sugar cane, it's crazy but I also did a full seed to harvest on the sugar cane and the dirty kush breath I did them both in one but the dirty kush breath does not necessarily make this list but it does get an honorable mention but the sugar cane man the flowers were not necessarily fat like the OMFG they were they were fat I'm talking fat P-H-A-T like that big got fat I ain't talking about that with the sugar cane though the sugar cane was more 
slim type flowers. Like, you see that, that model? She's like a model. She's a petite looking ass model. That's that type I'm talking about. Really nice, but the trichome bills on that were crazy, bro. Out of this world. The, probably the frostiest flower. Straight up some of the frostiest flower. There were a lot of frosty flowers I've grown, like especially that peyote Wi-Fi. That was frosty AF, but this one was also really frosty. Come to think of it, the lilac diesel was also really frosty. Man, I've grown some super frosty cold bars, but all that said, the sugar cane, it's got a really nice sweet nose to it. So if you guys like sweet smells, I'm not talking fruity, but I'm talking sweet, almost like literal sugar cane. I guess that's why they called it that. Coming to think of it, it makes a lot of sense. But that sugar cane is amazing. Off the chart, I love it. I grew two different phenos of it. It was awesome. Now, if you guys know there's regular sugar cane and there's deluxe sugar cane by in-house, I grew the regular sugar cane, not the deluxe one, just the regular one. That one is the one that I want. I want the original, bro. You get me? But the deluxe is supposed to be cool as well. So if you guys hit either one of them, you guys will not be disappointed. So that was Frosty. Now, speaking of Frosty, let's move on to number four. Yo, y'all gotta check out them new Mars Hydro Evo smart lights, fam. Those lights rock. Y'all know we've been running Mars Hydro gear on this channel for the longest while now. And no matter whether you're a beginner grower or a master grower, Bruh. whatever the hell that means, then for sure, Mars Hydro lights got you covered, fam. Two of my personal favorites are the FC8000 and the SP3000. These lights rock. And now Mars Hydro's leveled up the game even more with these Evo smart lights, fam. Definitely check them out, guys. And of course, we got you guys covered with that discount code ICANTHC. Use that and snag a nice little discount on anything definitely check out the mars hydro official website now if i were you guys i'd use that discount code on them new evo smart lights fam these lights got some amazing standout features such as the samsung lm 301h evo's high efficiency rating we're talking 3.14 umos per joule for a single diode and 2.85 umos per joule for the entire light mind blowing plus they also got that new smart fc 4000 evo bar light made for 2x4 coverage so if you're like me and you love to use 2x4 tents just because of how versatile and nifty they are then this light is definitely worth a try for any 2x4 tent i'd recommend this or the sp3000 i love my sp3000 and for any 4x4 or 5x5 tent i'm gonna definitely recommend these new evo smart lights or that fc8000 i've also used the fc6500 and it works great now it doesn't stop there guys because mars hydro's also got tons of grow tents, carbon filters, and other grow equipment as well. If you're just starting off, you can grab an entire grow kit with everything that you need to get started from seed all the way to harvest, including thermometers, pots, timers, the works. With that Mars Hydro ICANN THC discount, you guys can get it at a great price too. So level up your grow room and thank me later. You won't regret it. I promise Perfect. you, fam. Now, number four, guys, is that I can gang, man. This is a strain which I bred myself personally. I've been working on this for like the past four or five years, literally. And I ain't talking no pollen chucking BS. I've been literally taking notes, journaling, researching, pairing strains, a lot of crosses I actually made myself did not make the cut. Straight up, they just got tossed out. I, it just did not hit the notes that I was looking for. I like certain types of notes. I got a really unique flavor profile that I look for, guys. So that's what I was looking for when it came to this. But the ICANN gang, man, after so much hard work for such a long time, I was finally able to bring it out, man, and finally able to perfect some of the stuff. So if you guys are interested in this one, this one actually went out to all the ICANN VIP Bean Club homies. The fam, you guys would have gotten this. You guys have gotten this no charge. You guys have literally gotten this because you guys are part of the fam. So as long as you guys are part of the fam, you guys will get that fire. And this is where we got a shot of the ICANN VIP Bean Club fam. Because if you guys like fire genetics, that's where you guys need to join up with. The ICANN VIP Bean Club is always popping. Mailboxes are always burning down. You don't believe me? Just ask my homies in the back. That's what I'm saying, man. They know. They got, they got their shit on deck. That shit burning down. It's burning all the way down. We even got them back here. What are they saying? Burning down. So mailboxes are always burning down, guys, but the I Can Gang strain is a really nice one, man. This one has an average flower time. Pretty much for me, I've, I've ran it as long as about 12 weeks. I try not to push it too, too far. You know, when you go past the prime with flowers, it can be losing some of the quality, sacrifice some of the quality type shit. But this one has a really nice gassy taste. It has a little bit of fruit in the aftertaste, a little bit of sweet in the aftertaste, but it really hits a lot of those gassy notes that I've been looking for, man. And it's a super robust plant. I'm talking robust. Some of the characteristics and traits that I got from the parent plants, man, super trichome, you might. I was talking about Frosty just now with that uh, sugar cane. This one is also super frosty, man. And the colors can vary a lot. The colors vary a lot depending on your environment. And that's something 
something I was truly looking for. I was looking for the variations in the colors. Because if people are growing in slightly colder environments, everyone knows flowers can turn a little bit more purple. But if you're growing in somewhere that's not necessarily cold, I still want you guys to get a little bit of that variation, man. That's what I'm talking about. So, absolutely, man. The fucking I can gang, guys. It's off the chart, man. So, a lot of you guys have gotten this. A lot of you guys have been growing it. Check out my IG. Check out I can VIP seeds uh, on Instagram and also... Check out the VIP Facebook group, man. A lot of people are on there posting the fire posts and what they've been growing, and it's really some of that dang, some of that good, good. Now, the flowers are medium to heavy. You do get some nice, stacky flowers. It's not as skinny as the slur cane. The plant overall, like I said, is a really nice, robust plant. Easy to grow, no stress at all. It's not too finicky, and the colors just fade so beautifully, man. So definitely check out that I Can Gang packs. We got a few packs, limited, super limited, man. Check it out, link in the description if you guys want to join up. Join up with the I Can VIP Bean Club. You guys can get there as well. And that's it. Let's move on to number five. Because number five, maybe we save the best for last. Maybe it's just not so good. Who knows? But let's get into it. Now, for number five, guys, we got that sherbet cake. And this one is by Elevate Seed. Again, this one is actually one I grew back in the Caribbean, too. So I grew quite a few strains back in the Caribbean, man. Come to think of it. But Elevate Seeds had actually hooked us up with this strain. And they hooked us up with the Forbidden Cake as well. I ran, I ran both of them side by side. The Forbidden Cake was really purple, super sweet, and really candy-like. But the sherbet cake was just dang gassy. It was straight up diesel, dog, like no cap. And that's why it made it onto this list. So maybe it's number five, maybe it's number one. Like I said, there's no particular order, so how you guys want to look at it is how you guys look at it. But that sherbet cake by Elevate Seeds was really nice. This one is also on the channel. I believe we did a Seed to Harvest on this, or maybe it's a two-part video. I do remember posting a lot on this one, but it was so friggin' nice. And like, literally, I still got a few phenos kept to the side to use for breeding purposes later on, simply because that was such a gassy pheno that I got, man. Like, you know, you guys know, you can pop a pack of beans, and every pheno can be slightly different, man. That pheno that I got of that sherbet cake, gas AF, diesel, dank, everything. And it didn't turn too much in color. It did not change too much in color. It was not a massive fade. It wasn't going like to purple. It wasn't going like green to purple or anything like that, but it was just a really nice one, man. And this particular cut was actually one of the ones that I think I cured for the longest that I've ever caught anything for my, in my whole life. I'm talking, like, I think I cured one of these babies for like a year. It was like literally, I cut it down, I harvested, I dried, I cured and everything. And I had this for like months or months, just put away, keeping my hands out of the cookie jar. Like, don't touch that jar, mother I literally kept my hands out of it and Testament to that because it tasted better and better over time now guys a lot of you guys who know the longer you cure stuff It can get a little bit of color loss it can go from that really nice vibrant bright green to a little bit of a darker green simply because time has passed But that does not mean it's not gonna be as tasty or as good because this was so tasty It was still so good and I was super happy with it I actually invited some homies over had them toke it up with me I was like boys like I literally had this cure for like almost a year now what do you guys think? They looked at it and they were like, man, this is crazy, man, man. Honestly, fire, bro. Dank. Smut. You grew this? Wow. Shit. So, straight up, that's another banger. So, that's my list of my top five. Jump in the comments down below and let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys ran. Have you guys ran anything that turned out to be absolute fire? Have you guys got a top five? Have you guys ran five, maybe ten? Jump in the comments down below and let me know what you guys top five when it comes to those genetics, man. They're always different types of things. There's so many different cultivars, so many different genetics. No way that anyone could have ever ran them all. So, drop them down there and let me know what's your top five. And like I said, there are tons of other stuff that I've ran. Bag seeds, not bag seeds, all sorts of stuff. But I try to keep it stuff that you can see visually, stuff that I posted on IG or I had on the channel before, just stuff that you guys can see, not stuff that I'm just pulling out my ass and be like, yeah, I grew that, like some other people out here be doing on YouTube. But anyway, guys, drop it in the comments, let me know, smash that like, subscribe down below, and join up with that I Can VIP Beam Club, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace, fam. Diesel Dog out. Perfect.